Okay, guys, problem 4, 105 in the 14th edition. Um, so what does it say? It says, replace the loading system acting on the beam by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment at point O. So there's a bunch of stuff happening here. We've got a force there, we've got a force there, and we've got a couple moment here. And we are required to replace this system with an equivalent system, right? By replacing this with, an, with a force and couple moment acting at point O. So another way that I like to look at this, if, you have, um, if you've watched uh, the previous videos, is um, essentially what is the effect of this force and this force and this couple moment? What is the effect that, that these loadings have at an arbitrary point? So what is the effect that these forces and this couple moment has at point O? So essentially... I mean, I know this is a, this is for future um, future education, but if we are designing something here that will hold this beam, we need to know what the forces are and the and the the moment that is being applied at that point. So, what is the effect that these forces have at that point? And this is what um, this section does when it when we simplify the system, when we replace these forces and couple moments with an equivalent force and couple moment at that point. So I hope that's clear. Okay? So we are trying to see what effect these have there at that point by replacing this with a force and couple moment. Okay. So here is my amazing drawing of that. This force is 450, 450 Newton. Okay, so just also a reminder that when we see something like this, this refers to a, a couple moment. Okay, and we've got some forces here. So the first step that we want to uh, carry out when we are trying to replace the system with an equivalent system is we need to calculate our resultant force, which is then just simply equal to the sum of all the forces. Okay, so... What is our resultant force in the x is equal to the sum of all the forces in the x, which is then simply equal to the only x component I can see is this one here, and that is equal to minus 450 sine of 30, which equals minus 225 Newton. Okay? And we've got FR in the Y, sum of the forces in the Y is minus 450 cos 30, minus 450 cos 30, plus 200 equals minus 189,71 Newton. All right? Now, our FR is equal to minus 225 squared plus minus 189,71 squared square root. So our FR gives us, it's so nice that I've done this before, 294,3 Newton. All right. So what does this mean? What is this, this FR now? This FR is now the magnitude of the force that's actually being applied at that point. You get that? It's the magnitude of the force that's being applied. So when we, when we want to replace this with an equivalent system, at that point, we calculate first the force of 294 is acting at that point. We then we, we still need to uh, calculate the angle. But if we've got this minus... 225, or rather 225 newtons in the negative x, and we've got 189,71 in the negative y, then this angle here, let's call it theta, say tan to the minus 1 of 
189,71 over 225 gives us our theta, which is, sorry, I wrote that quite awkwardly, second function tan, 189,71 divided by 225 gives us an angle of 40,13. Okay? So we've got our angle. So we have this force here, the magnitude of 294,3, that's actually acting at this point. Okay? We can draw it in a bit later. Then the next step is to now determine our moments. So we know that the resultant couple moment due to the, the forces and the existing couple moments is equal to the moment uh, of all the forces due to all the forces, sorry, the sum of all the moments due to the forces plus the sum of the existing couple moments. Okay? So we need to determine what uh, rotational effect these forces have at that point and we need to include and we need to add it to the existing couple moments right so now what um, what are the moments due to the forces so I'm gonna have two components for this force using the principle of moments I'm gonna have this force going down like that and I'm also gonna have a force uh, I'm going to have a, a, a vertical force and a horizontal force. So I'm going to have two moments for this, for this force, and I'm going to have one moment due to that force. Okay? So, if I break this up into its x and y, that, that becomes 450 times cos 30. And notice, I'm not putting in the minus here, right? I'm not putting in a minus because... I'm not dealing, I'm not adding and subtracting forces. I'm working with moments. And um, when it comes to moments, we only put in the, the negative or the positive at the end because we're dealing with the rotations. Okay? So 450 cos 30, that is the force going in that direction. So that force, that component of that 450 there, is that going to give me a clockwise or an anti-clockwise moment it will give me a clockwise moment right so now i've got the magnitude of the force what is the moment arm it'll be 1.5 okay so it's going to be minus 450 cos 30 times the moment arm which is 1.5 there's the magnitude Ignore this minus for now. That's the magnitude, guys. That's the moment arm. Then I, then I ask myself, is it going clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, we choose anti-clockwise as positive. So because it's going clockwise, it's a minus. Okay? Then the next one, we have to break this up into the horizontal force. So that is for 50 sine 30. Again... I know it's, it's going in the negative x, but ignore that. All we're looking for is the magnitude of that force, and we're looking for a moment on. Is that force going to give us a clockwise or anti-clockwise moment about 0.0? It's going to give us an anti-clockwise moment, and our moment arm is 0.2. So we're going to have plus, because it's anti-clockwise, 450 sine 30, and the moment arm is 0.2. <clears throat> then I've still got this one this force I can immediately determine its moment arm its moment arm is going to be this perpendicular distance 2 plus 1.5 and is it going to go clockwise or anti-clockwise it's going to go anti-clockwise okay I hope you guys can pick up whether the anti-clockwise clockwise thing now so it's anti-clockwise which means it's positive so I'm going to add it there 200 and the moment arm is 3.5. So these are now the moments due to the forces. Okay. Now we need to include the existing couple moments. And I have an existing couple moment of 200 Newton meter clockwise. So that is minus 200. Okay. If I add this up, I get minus 
39.56 Newton meter or 39.56 Newton meter clockwise. Okay? So, what are we meant to learn out of this? What are we meant to learn out of this? That, that entire loading system, right? It, it can be replaced by a force of 294,3 can be replaced at point O with a force of 294,3 at this angle of 40,13. But we also must include a clockwise moment of 39,56 Newton meter. So this original system of forces and couple couples and couple moments, the effect it has at point O is to apply a force of 294 at that angle and a, and a rotational effect, which is a moment of 39,56. Okay? Hope this helps. Cheers.